Welcome to the Duns Corners Church. This is Easter Sunday. We're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Matthew's Gospel, the 28th chapter, after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. There was a violent earthquake. An angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and set on it. His appearance was like lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid they shook and became like dead men. And the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus. He was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. But wait, there's more. Who hasn't heard that phrase, the hallmark of late night television? The great line that goes with infomercials. Actually, it's the bane of late night television. Endless products for apparently endless needs we never knew we had are hawked on late night television. Usually these products promise so much and deliver so little. They tout all of the things, and, and the thing about an infomercial is it never really seems to come to an end. Just when you think you've heard everything there is to hear about a Snuggie, a thigh master, or some kitchen gadget, just when you think you've heard it all, that voice comes and says, but wait, there's more. Who can forget the RoboCut vacuum? The RoboCut vacuum takes care of your floors, your carpets, their attachments for hard to get places, an extension for the cranky cobwebs and... But wait, there's more. The RoboCut vacuum even cuts your hair. The chop o -matic. it chops all your vegetables perfectly. Celery, carrots, zucchini, cucumbers. But wait, the chop o -matic even cuts your onions so fine you'll never shed a tear. Every weight loss, every hair loss, thigh slimmer, app shaper, belly buster, car visor, cup holder, pocket fisherman, George Foreman grill, and any other product you could imagine, just when you think you've heard it all. But wait, there's more. Now what happens to a preacher when he's been quarantined? When he has too much time on his hand, too many Thoughts in his mind, and, and he gets a crazy thought from late night television going over and over in his mind, that ubiquitous late night question, but wait, there's more. What, what happens? Well, stop. Don't touch your dial. Don't change your channel. You are about to hear an infomercial about the greatest story ever told. And once the story gets started, it, it draws you in and it won't let you go. Every moment moves on with that great invitation, but wait, there's more. The infomercial begins with a bang. This is the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Christ means the anointed one, the, the one they've been waiting for, son of David. David was the great king. Royal blood courses in the veins of Jesus, son of Abraham. Abraham received the promise that all nations would be blessed. Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. And then we get his genealogy. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of jo Have you ever wondered how you feel 30 minutes of an infomercial? That's a long time. Well, the genealogy is pretty good. It goes on and on. And 42 generations in the Gospel of Matthew. And at some point you're wondering, is there really more? And we're going to fast forward through the genealogy. But wait, when the genealogy finishes, there's more. Son of David. Son of Abraham. When Joseph finds out that Jesus is entering the world, we find out that Jesus is the Son of God. Call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Son of David, son of Abraham, son of God. Jesus is born in a manger. And, 
And then early in his adult ministry, he goes out in the desert. The, the devil tempts him and tries to get him off track. And he's born in a manger. He, he's faced danger. And then when the waters of the Jordan River call, he says, I'm jumping in with a big old cannonball. He knew the manger. He knew danger. When the Jordan called, he said, cannonball, the heavens opened. A dove descended the Holy Spirit. And God said, that's my boy. This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. But wait, there's more. Jesus teaches. And when Jesus teaches, we're told that people said, where did he get this authority? His, his teaching had power. He teaches and he reaches. He, he reached reaches out to those whom no one else would touch. That There was a leper, a person with a terrible skin disease. He lived in quarantine. Isn't that something 2,000 years ago? People knew what it was like to be in a quarantine. And, and his question to Jesus was, are, are you willing to make me clean? And Jesus reaches. He, he crosses that great chasm that isolated this man and he touches his disfigured skin. Jesus teaches and, and Jesus reaches. He, he makes the leper clean, the lame walk, the blind see and the deaf can hear. He teaches, he reaches, and he preaches. Jesus preaches words of blessing. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn, the meek, the the ones who hunger and thirst for the kingdom of God, for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers. Blessed even are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. Jesus preaches about love, love your neighbor. And Jesus preaches to even love our enemy. He preaches blessing, he preaches love. He preaches that if you wanna be great in the kingdom of heaven, learn to be a servant. He preaches about loving the least, the last, and the lost. When, when you did something to a poor person, a hungry person, you, you did it unto me. He teaches, he reaches, and he preaches. That old Ginsu knife that used to be an infomercial, it slices and dices. But Jesus teaches, he reaches, and he preaches. And Are you ready? <laughs> but wait. There's more. Jesus even sees the future. He, he tells his disciples, I'm going to end up going to Jerusalem. If you're a king and Jerusalem is the place that you're headed to, that's where the Jewish center was. If you're a king, you go to Jerusalem. And, and Jesus says, I'm headed to Jerusalem. But when Jesus talks about Jerusalem, the shine starts to come off of the infomercial. When Jesus talks about Jerusalem, you realize he didn't, he didn't come for some get-rich scheme, a health and wealth in a handbasket. Jesus says, when I get to Jerusalem, I'm going to suffer, I'm going to be rejected and arrested. When I get to Jerusalem, I'm going to be convicted, condemned. But wait, there's more. I'm going to be convicted, condemned, and crucified. And sure enough, when Jesus goes to Jerusalem, he suffers, he's rejected, he's arrested, he's convicted, condemned. But wait, there's more? God's beloved son is crucified. Back in the old days, a, a television set didn't turn off instantly. You would turn off the TV and the darkness would come in from the edges and, and there'd be a little spot in the middle and eventually that spot would be extinguished and, and then there was nothing but darkness. And as Jesus goes to Jerusalem, the, the light just draws in. The darkness covers until that's all that's left is darkness. Jesus suffers, he dies, he's condemned, he's put in a tomb, and all that's left is darkness. All of the hopes, all of the dreams, they vanish into the darkness of his death. 
And it seems like Jesus is just like every other infomercial. He, he overpromised and he underdelivered. I wish I had the courage as a preacher to wait. I wish I had the courage as a preacher to wait 30 seconds, a minute, five, 10, an hour. I wish I had the courage to wait through Friday and Saturday and, and just to let that great sense of despair and emptiness linger among us. That's what the disciples went through. When the screen turned black for them, that's all they knew, that it was over, that Jesus had died. I wish I had the courage to wait. There, there's something about that long period of waiting that makes that Sunday morning so special. Women who are filled with doom and gloom, they come to the tomb. Jesus suffered and died. Wait, there's more. Have those words ever sounded better? Have those words ever brought more hope to us? He suffered and died, but wait, there's more. The gloom and doom at the tomb. What happens at that tomb? Death goes boom. It, it explodes, it's crushed, it's gone, and Jesus is alive. The, the stone rolls away, the angels are on top. They're shouting out, he's not here, he's alive. And, and Christians through the ages have taken that and, and turned it into this great shout of victory. He's risen, he has risen indeed. If the infomercials of life have left you empty, all the promises that are made by all the products if they overpromised and underdelivered, and and you're feeling that emptiness, that void, that longing, that seeking, Jesus isn't like an infomercial. Jesus doesn't stay behind a screen. He comes to you. He meets you face to face. Jesus comes and wraps you in His arms. More than that, Jesus even comes and lives in your heart. Jesus is an amazing God. He enters your heart and, and we have to ask, can it get any better than that? To have the Son of God live in our heart. Believe it or not, I have to say it one more time. But wait, there's more. He comes with a guarantee. Throughout the Bible, God makes a promise, a guarantee. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And the Apostle Paul takes that promise and he puts it right on the shoulders of Jesus. This is what he says. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that he's given in Jesus Christ. Nothing. What can separate us? Death or life? Nothing. Angels or demons? Nothing. The, the present or the future, nothing. Any powers, height, depth, anything in all creation, can anything separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus? And the answer is nothing. Nothing can separate us. So all that's left for you today, for me today, is to open our heart and let him in. Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. He's knocking. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in so he can love you. Let him in so he can live in you. And friends, there really is nothing that's better than that. It's because of that on Easter morning, we say with great joy and, and a joy that fills and overwhelms us, we shout out, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.